I would like to start out tonight by asking you about endochondrolosification. Okay, step one. Chondrocytes in the center of the cartilage model become larger. The cartilage matrix becomes calcified, and the chondrocytes die leaving a hole in the matrix. A hole in the matrix, oh no. The perichondrium of the cartilage model becomes transformed into a periosteum and an osteogenic layer forms. The periosteum produces a thin collar of bone around the shaft of the cartilage model. Oh, I see. You should see the bone around my shaft. Come on Larry. Blood vessels and osteoprogenitor cells from the periosteum migrate into the cavities within the calcified cartilage matrix. The calcified cartilage breaks down, but before doing so provides a surface on which osteoblasts can produce spongy bone. This then becomes the primary ossification center. My bone is spongy right now. Dee do you learn all this in Alaska? You bet yeah. Step 4. As osteogenesis continues in the primary ossification center, a cavity results as the bone is remodeled. This central cavity is called a marrow cavity. Further growth involves an increase in both the length and diameter of the bone. That is the same way my bone used to grow in length and diameter. Ha 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 ha. Okay you seem to handle that question with ease. But how does bone grow in length? The shaft of the long bone is called a diaphysis and the two expanded ends are called epiphysis. The flared portion between the epiphysis and the diaphysis is called a metaphysis. Growth in the length of bone occurs in the epiphysis in a piece of cartilage called the epiphyseal plate. Wow you are very smart. Who knew? What next? Secondary ossification centers appear in the epiphysis in a manner similar to that described above for the primary ossification center. Go on please this is some wild stuff. I am sure our viewers at home are amazed. As ossification proceeds, the epiphysis become filled with spongy bone and only a thin piece of hyaline cartilage remains on the articular surface as articular cartilage. A thin plate of cartilage, the epiphyseal plate, now separate the bone of the epiphysis from that of the diaphysis. Growth in the length of the bone occurs at the epiphyseal plate as is evidenced by the appearance of zones within the cartilage. All right, are you done? Almost, as the bone matures the rate of bone production catches up with the rate of cartilage production and the cartilage that was the epiphyseal plate is replaced by an epiphyseal line. Wow, no wonder McCain did not want you to speak. You were nuts. How is Bristol doing?